Matt, thanks. This morning on today's American Story with Bob Dodson, a woman who has outlived a mystery. After six decades, she has finally discovered how her husband died. So this new year, she can finally move on with her life at the age of 91. I'm so glad to see you. Caroline Colson cares nothing for calendars. Hers is a love without seasons. Fire! 66 years ago, her husband Steve Sarovchik went to war and vanished. Caroline never moved, so he could find her if he ever came home. Looked for him every day. I'm still watching. At 91. I'm still watching. Steve was just 16 when he joined the Navy. A big kid who lied about his age. Did you fall in love with his wavy hair or his pretty eyes or what? <laughs> I guess I fell in love with all of them. <laughs> Besides, the man could cook. He served 70 men on a sub for a dozen years. Did he do the cooking at home too? A lot. Did he? Lots of it. The only thing he cooked too much when he cooked. <laughs> Don't let go of your hands. The other day, his great granddaughter Emmeline wanted to see where he worked. So her mom showed her a sub similar to Steve's. Look at the bread hook in that one. The only thing left of his ship is this bell. And you touch the bell. It was like touching him. It was like touching him. Steve's daughter, Pat, was three when her dad's sub became one of the biggest mysteries of World War II. All hands lost. The USS Grunion disappeared off the coast of Alaska. No one knew where until three brothers did what the Navy could not. They found the Grunion. Oh uh, yeah, there it is to the left. The sons of the sub's captain, Jim Abley, were determined to find all the missing dads. Bless the horse, there wasn't nothing but little kids, you know, when they, they lost their dad. The turning point came when a Japanese historian found a lost account of the Grunion's last battle. It disappeared in 1942 while patrolling the ocean between Japan and Alaska. Japanese eyewitnesses say the Grunion was surfacing, trying to finish off a cargo ship it had torpedoed. But the freighter fired back 84 times. A dull thud, then dead silence that stretched six decades. What's that? Is that a hatch back there? They located the wreckage on the side of a volcano a mile beneath the sea. Scattered in bits and pieces, like a board game that ended angrily. Did you find any remains? Uh, no, and we were told that at this depth, even bones would dissolve totally, and certainly over this time frame. But not memories. I knew you would be here. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much. While the brothers searched for the sub, the crewman's relatives looked for one another. The Abelie's mom had kept them all together for years, handwriting notes to all 70 families week after week until she died. Then they drifted apart, lost track of one another. Chillingly, the last relative surfaced the morning the Grunion was found. I love you. Love is the thread that pulled them all together. And I feel like this is goodbye. They gathered one last time to hear the names that surfaced from the sea. Ship's cook first class, Stephen Sarovchek. Memories frozen in time still have the power to move. Caroline stepped out of her wheelchair and marched to the deck of the sub for a final farewell. Bye darling, I love you. This new year brings Carolyn a bit of closure, but she cannot forget her first love. He has never left her mind. For today, Bob Dotson, NBC News, with an American story in Cleveland, Ohio. And we're back in a moment on this New Year's morning. This is Today on NBC.